My dear listeners, tonight I will take you on a journey full of mystery and hope to the heart of a village hidden between mountains and dense forests where an ancient legend comes to life in the hands of an old blacksmith. The story of Eldrick, the one who forged a chain of destiny, is a tale of courage, light, and redemption. Sit back, close your eyes, and let yourself be enveloped by this story, which reminds us that even in the darkest moments, there is always a ray of hope. The Chain of Destiny In a secluded corner of the world, in a small and sleepy village, forgotten by time and hidden between tall mountains and deep forests, lived an old blacksmith named Eldrick. Eldrick was a simple man, but skilled in his craft, and his workshop was the place where the magic of metal came to life under the strength and expertise of his hands. Every day, the sun rose over the quiet village, casting its warm rays over moss-covered roofs and the dirt road that wound through modest houses. But Eldrick, like his village, was no ordinary man, and on a cold autumn night, destiny knocked on his door in the form of an unexpected and mysterious visit. That night was different from any other. The wind howled through the bare branches of the trees, and dry leaves danced in the air, carried by cold currents that slipped through the village. The fire in Eldrick's furnace burned low, casting playful shadows on the walls of his workshop. The blacksmith, with hands calloused from years of hard work, sat deep in thought, staring at his anvil, where so many stories had been forged in metal. Suddenly, an unusual sound came from the door, a slight creak, followed by a cold breath that entered inside. The door, which had been securely closed until then, suddenly opened, and in the doorway appeared a silhouette. Eldrick looked up, and in the flickering light of the fire, he saw a woman. Her hair, black as ebony, cascaded in waves over her shoulders, and her eyes, deep and dark, seemed to hold secrets beyond mortal understanding. Without uttering a word, the woman approached Eldrick, each step accompanied by a faint sound, like the rustle of a silk cloak. Reaching him, she raised her delicate hands and handed him a small, heavy sack. Without asking anything, the blacksmith took the sack from her hands and felt its unusual weight. Carefully opening it, he took out pieces of metal that shone with a cold, silver light as if they had been bathed in moonbeams. The metal was of an unknown nature, and although Eldrick was accustomed to steel, iron, and bronze, he had never seen anything like this before. The moment he touched the metal, he felt a shiver run through his body, as if the energy of the material itself was penetrating his skin. Without asking where this metal came from or what its purpose was, Eldrick knew it was no ordinary material. The woman, without offering explanations, requested that a chain be forged. Eldrick, a simple man but intuitive, understood that this request was full of mystery and significance. Without wasting any more time, he turned to the anvil, placing the unknown metal on it and preparing to begin forging. The flames in his furnace rose as the embers lifted into the air, and the sound of his hammer echoed through the night. As Eldrick struck the metal, he felt that each blow transformed not just a piece of metal, but also the air around him. Each link he forged seemed to come to life, emanating a strange and powerful energy. As the blacksmith continued his work, visions began to appear in his mind, like forgotten memories of a distant past. In those moments, Eldrick saw the past of his village as he had never seen it before. He saw the struggles and trials the villagers had gone through, 
the joys and sorrows that had shaped their lives. Images of children running on green fields, of women washing clothes in the clear river, and of men working the land, all these scenes passed through his mind in rapid succession, but with undeniable clarity. But the visions did not stop at the past. As the links of the chain multiplied under his hammer, Eldrick began to see fragments of the future. His future, the future of the village, and of the people he knew so well. He saw shadows creeping through the village streets, saw sad faces, souls burdened by the weight of wrong decisions and merciless fates. Eldrick saw the faces of the villagers, as he knew them, but also as he had never seen them before. Instead of the smiles and warm looks with which they greeted him daily, Eldrick now saw expressions of anxiety, fear, and guilt. He saw deep shadows under their eyes, wrinkles that seemed to hide years of suffering and the burden of secrets too heavy to be spoken. As each link was added to the chain, these visions became darker. Eldrick saw how the chain, once complete, began to tighten around the village, binding everyone in an embrace of iron that did not bring peace but an unbearable burden. He saw how each villager's mistakes, no matter how small or large, were attracted like magnets to the strange metal, gathering in the links of the chain, each sin and fear forming a link that closed with a dull thud, like an unspoken oath. As the chain near completion, even more disturbing visions began to haunt Eldrick. He saw how the village, already overwhelmed by the weight of poverty and daily needs, began to sink into a darkness that seemed endless. The sky, once pierced by the sun's rays even on the coldest winter days, now became a sea of dark and thick clouds, and an eternal night seemed to settle over the entire community. In those visions, Eldrick saw how the village's children, once full of life and joy, now walked silently and sadly, with empty eyes, devoid of any trace of hope. He saw how the people he had known all his life, those who greeted him with respect every time they passed by his workshop, were transformed into grim strangers, weighed down by invisible burdens, unable to lift their gaze from the ground. Each link Eldrick added seemed to add another shadow of despair to the village's life, and the village seemed to be heading towards an inevitable point of collapse. Yet, Eldrick could not stop. Every time he tried to put down the hammer, an unseen force urged him to continue, to add another link, to strike once more. It was as if the metal itself was calling him, demanding to be completed, to fulfill its destiny. As he neared the completion of the chain, the mysterious woman reappeared in the doorway of his workshop. This time, her gaze seemed even deeper, darker, like a bottomless abyss that absorbed everything around it. Without speaking a word, she approached Eldrick and, with a voice that seemed to come from another world, revealed the truth to him. The chain he was forging was no ordinary one, but an instrument of destiny, meant to bind the community, to unite their souls in a way that would test their deepest fears and most hidden secrets. The woman told him that the chain had the power to either destroy or rebirth the village, depending on each soul's ability to face its own shadows. If the villagers' souls were not strong enough to confront their fears and mistakes, the chain would bind them all on a burden so heavy that the village would collapse under its weight and darkness would reign forever. But if the villagers had the courage to accept their mistakes and confront their fears, the chain could free them, offering a new chance to right their destiny. Eldrick, overwhelmed by the woman's revelations, felt a deep horror growing in his soul. He realized that, 
Unwittingly, he had forged an object of incredible power, an object that could bring either salvation or doom. Each hammer blow, each link added, only increased the burden he carried. It was too late to stop, and the chain had to be completed. With a heavy heart, Eldrick continued to strike the metal, but now with a new awareness of the importance of each action. Each link became for him a silent prayer, a hope that perhaps, just perhaps, the village would have the strength to face what was to come. With each strike, Eldrick prayed that the chain would not become too heavy a burden but a means of liberation, of purification. The chain was almost complete, each link forged by his trembling hands, but his heart was enveloped in a storm of emotions. Eldrick knew that this chain was not just an object, but a symbol of fate, an instrument that had the power to change the destinies of the entire village. As he neared completion, a deep fear began to grip his soul. The visions he had of the chain, of how it could bind everyone's destinies in a dark network of fears and mistakes, haunted him relentlessly. He felt the entire weight of responsibility pressing down on his shoulders, and the duty to complete the work began to transform into an unbearable burden. With the chain almost complete, Eldrick decided to make one last desperate effort. With a heavy heart and a troubled mind, he told himself that he had to destroy the last links before they were united into the complete chain. The fire burned intensely, and his hammer was ready, but the strange metal from which the chain was forged proved to be indestructible. No matter how hard he tried, no matter how forcefully he struck, the metal remained intact, defying all his efforts. Eldrick felt powerless, as if his will no longer mattered in the face of the mysterious power of the chain. Every attempt to destroy the metal seemed in vain, as if fate itself would not allow him to resist. But deep in his soul, the blacksmith could not accept this fate. The desire to protect his village, to prevent the darkness from descending upon his community, pushed him to find a solution, no matter how difficult it might be. With his last remaining strength, Eldrick realized that if he could not destroy the chain, he could still shape it in another way, to transform it into a symbol of hope rather than despair. Determined, he took the last link, the one that would close the chain, and placed it on the anvil. Instead of forging it like the others, Eldrick decided to close it with his own stamp, inscribing on it a symbol that for him represented everything that life and hope meant, a sun rising over a mountain. This was his last chance to change the course of events, his last hope that the chain could bring light instead of darkness. With trembling hands, Eldrick raised the hammer for the last time, feeling how every fiber of his being was charged with the significance of this moment. The blow fell with a force that seemed to come not just from his arms, but from his soul, from the deep desire to change the village's fate. At the moment the last blow was struck, a deep tremor shook the earth, causing the entire village to quake. Eldrick felt the air in the workshop become charged with an unknown energy, and the ground seemed to vibrate beneath his feet. With an intensity that seemed to defy reality, the earth opened, and a blinding light emerged from the chain, piercing the darkness of the night. That light, stronger than anything Eldrick had ever seen, spread across the entire village, flooding it with a brilliance that seemed to come from the depths of the earth. The villagers, asleep in their homes, suddenly awoke, feeling how an unseen weight lifted from their souls. It was as if the darkness that had surrounded them for so long was being banished by that purifying light. The chain, now complete, floated in the air for a moment, 
shining with an unprecedented intensity. Eldrick, with wide eyes full of wonder, watched as the links of the chain, still united, began to disintegrate into fine stardust. This dust, full of light and hope, slowly spread over the entire village, like a blessing from the heavens. Each speck of dust fell gently on the ground, on the roofs of houses, on the trees, on the faces of the people, bringing with it a profound peace. The villagers, having emerged from their homes, looked at the celestial spectacle with eyes full of wonder. The feeling of heaviness that had weighed on them for so long was gone, replaced by a relief that none of them had ever felt before. Eldrick, weakened and exhausted but with a light heart, knelt, looking at his final work. The fire in his furnace slowly died out, and the workshop was enveloped in silence. Eldrick watched as the last particles of stardust gently settled over the village, knowing that the village had been freed. The earth had calmed, and the lights of the sky began to diminish, leaving behind a clear night, without shadows or darkness. For the first time in a long time, Eldrick felt that everything would be fine. That night, under the clear, cloudless sky, Eldrick slept for the first time with a deep sense of relief. In the quiet of the night, the village fell into a peaceful sleep, protected by the light that had spread everywhere. The mornings that followed that bright and mysterious night brought with them a subtle but profound change in the heart of the village. The air seemed fresher, and the sunlight filtering through the leaves of the trees now had a special warmth, like a blessing descending over every corner of the land. The villagers, accustomed to living under a cloud of uncertainty and oppression, began to feel that something essential had changed in their world. At first, the change was imperceptible, like a gentle breeze that softly caresses the cheek without being truly felt. People continued their daily lives, but gradually, each inhabitant began to find within themselves a strength they had never known before. It was as if the chain of destiny, once dissolved, had gifted them with a part of its light, a spark that ignited in their hearts and gave them the courage to confront their own shadows. Each of these people carried within themselves a burden, a fear, a guilt that they had until then hidden deep in their souls. But now, inexplicably, they felt urged to face those fears head on. Sometimes this happened in the quiet of the night when each soul was left alone with its thoughts. Other times, it happened in the middle of an ordinary day when a simple gesture or kind word opened a door in the soul, releasing what had been kept captive. Eldrick, exhausted but at peace, watched these transformations with the eyes of a man who had seen much and understood more than he had ever wanted to. After that night, he had withdrawn into the quiet of his workshop, contemplating what had been and what had become. With hands still callous from work, he found peace in simple gestures, as if each hammer blow, each piece of metal he now shaped was for him a ritual of purification. As he observed how the village began to flourish, Eldrick felt that he had finally found his inner peace. The people around him were no longer just neighbors or acquaintances, but reborn souls, each finding within themselves the strength to rewrite their destiny. Each inhabitant, inspired by the light of that night, found the courage to live their life with a new sincerity and openness. Those dusty roads, which once seemed to lead nowhere, had now become paths of hope. The children, who had once been silent and withdrawn, now ran through the village with crystal clear laughter, without the shadows that had followed them for so long. The village's men and women, once burdened by unspoken fears and worries, now lifted their gazes with confidence, 
finding in themselves and in each other the strength to move forward. One morning, as the sun's rays began to flood the village with a golden light, Eldrick felt the presence of a familiar figure at the threshold of his workshop. Lifting his eyes, he saw the mysterious woman who had appeared that fateful night. This time, however, her face no longer bore that mysterious gravity but was lit by a gentle, almost parental smile. Without uttering a word, the woman conveyed to Eldrick a sense of gratitude, a silent acknowledgement of his effort and the courage to go all the way, despite the fears that had haunted him. Eldrick felt a warmth envelop his heart, a deep sense of fulfillment. At that moment, all the questions that had troubled his mind calmed, leaving only a feeling of peace. The woman, without lingering any longer, began to dissolve into the morning light, like an illusion of light melting with the first rays of the sun. Eldrick remained in the doorway of his workshop, watching as her figure dissipated, leaving behind only a deep sense of calm. He knew he would never see her again, but he felt that her presence had been the key, the catalyst that triggered everything that had happened. Thus, the chain of destiny, once forged to bind people to their mistakes, had become an instrument of liberation. The villagers had not been bound by the shadows of the past, but had been encouraged to face them and overcome them. Each link, instead of being a burden, had become a lesson, a step towards self-understanding and healing. Eldrick, the old blacksmith, had now become more than just a simple craftsman. In the eyes of the villagers, he was the one who had brought them the light, the one who, with his rough hands and compassionate heart, had managed to transform an instrument of destiny into a symbol of hope and courage. In this way, the village found its salvation, and Eldrick, after years of toil and turmoil, gained his inner peace. He watched as the light he had brought with his chain spread into the hearts of all those around him, knowing that he had changed not only the villager's destiny, but also the future. For every ray of sunshine that pierced the morning sky was a reminder of the day when darkness was banished and hope triumphed. And so, dear listeners, this was the chain of destiny. Remember, behind every seemingly ordinary face, there may be a hero in the making, and in every shadow, a story waiting to be revealed. Until next time, may your dreams be sweet and your nights full of magical adventures.